Okay, so we've got a customer that's kind of having a loud conversation in the background, so I had to mute some of this video. Right now, I am measuring the center to center of the lock and setting it at five and a half inches, which is the standard uh, common spacing for a lock to deadbolt on a door. This door happens to be an inch and three eighths inch door. It's an interior door leading up to a stairway. So here I'm getting my little uh, back set marker and I'm gonna mark the edge of the door. And then after I do that, I'm gonna mark the front of the door where the two and an eighth inch hole is gonna go in. And uh, double check it, make sure that the knob and the deadbolt are both the same back set. So then I'm going to, this door just keeps floating open on its own. I hate doors to do that. So what else we got going on here? I think right now I am probably checking out my drill bit and I'm uh, going to turn the volume back on. Just want to point out here on these narrow doors, you have to make sure you're dead center on the door because of how thin it is. Inch and three eighths door using an inch bit. You don't have much room on each side, so you need to get it dead center as possible. Okay, after you get your one inch hole drilled, there's a uh, several different kinds of markers um, to mark where your strike's gonna go. But it's just easiest to close the door, take a thin narrow pin and circle on the outside edge of each side and it shows you your mark. There's absolutely really no reason to use those strike plate marker deals.
Okay, again, silence the phone, but I am sticking the latch in the hole and outlining it with a pen to use a trim router. Normally, I would use a hammer and chisel to install a strike plate, but when you're working with these thin uh, inch and three-eighths doors, it, especially with the round faceplate strike or latches, it's kind of almost very difficult to mortise the vertical edge of the latch without um, splitting the wood. So I get out my trim router, which is a cheapy trim router from Harbor Freight and a good quality bit for that cheap trim router. And here, I think I'm still silenced, but what you do is you take your trim router and your uh, it's an adjustable depth, so you kind of lay your latch like that to see how deep it needs to be, and that kind of gives you how deep you need to uh, have it set when you're trim routing. Using a trim router is very loud, high-pitched, and it's also quite dangerous. You have to go very slow. You have to use very good sharp bits and uh, because one little mistake can send that sucker off the edge of the door and it would not be good. So um, if you're going to utilize a trim router in this fashion, I highly encourage heavy practice before using it on a door. I would like to point out that I do have that door braced between my legs while I'm doing that. You do not want the door to move at all.
Uh, it always takes a couple of little times to do this and right now I'm marking the edges that are not going flush. Also, I want to note that uh, the base that came with this router, I actually cut it kind of in half so that I have an open viewing chamber to be able to see through. So I did modify the base of that, and you may be able to see that when I was holding it up to, earlier in the video when I was holding it up to the latch uh, to check the depth, you may notice it was kind of like a cut in half base. So. Since it didn't go quite deep enough, we're going to go about another millimeter deeper here. And as I was doing this, I took a little bit off the inside edge to uh, make it more even. What you saw me do there was extend the deadbolt. Whenever you have a cross style latch uh, with the flat bar tailpiece, it's always best to extend the deadbolt before you insert the outer and inner trims. And when you turn the bar that goes through that latch, there will always be a center position. In other words, the bar may stop at three o'clock and nine o'clock uh, positions and so the center would be 12 it may stop at 12 o'clock six o'clock so your center would be nine o'clock um, whichever way your center is it turns 180 degrees so you insert it with the bolt extended on the door with that tailpiece or that bar that goes through always 
almost always at the center position of the 180 degree arc that it travels. Just a helpful tip. And one of my last few tidbits of advice when installing a lock, do not tighten one screw down totally and then the other one. You want to tighten them kind of both equally at the same time. So uh, go ahead and screw one down, just flush the surface, not tight at all. And then bring your other one in, flush to the surface, not tight at all. Uh, make sure your deadbolt is kind of square and seems to be lined up and level with the door and then tighten one screw and then move over and tighten the other screw and then the other one a little bit more and then check your latch to make sure it extends freely check your key to make sure it extends freely and uh, loosen or tighten these screws as needed after that I peek in between to see where the latch is lining up in the hole just prior to installing the strike plate just to make sure that it is perfectly level in the hole.
needed. That drop cloth I picked up from a fabric store. It is a like a fake leather with a cloth backing material that comes in like black and green and blue. It's pretty expensive per yard, but you only need like one square yard of it. As you can see, as this video is starting to wrap up, one of the most important things is to leave a neat job site. So this is a camping brush. If you can look in your camping sections of a sports store, sometimes you can find this little brush. It's called a tent brush used to sweep up your tent. It fits in your tool bag very well and is pretty important in getting all the debris off the floor. I always advise people that I did the best I could, but always to try to come back with the vacuum when they got a chance. But it is your responsibility uh, of someone coming into somebody's house and installing a lock to do as much as you can to leave the area exactly was it as it was before so yes you do have to dedicate four to eight minutes of cleaning up the area and if it would have been carpet i would have put more drop cloths down and, but this was perfectly okay and here in a minute you'll see me uh, you saw me wiping off the door some sawdust gets on the handle sawdust will get on the molding the inner molding of the door there and so try to get as much as you can up and the customer will appreciate your tidiness